Hello, everyone. Today, I want to talk about what's wrong with the RV industry. And this is going to be kind of a little bit of a rant and a lot of my opinion. And everybody, you know, is uh, justified to their own opinion. So if you don't like this, I'm sorry. I apologize. But this is the way I see it. I have grown up, not in the industry, but I've grown up camping and RVing with my family since I was born. My parents have pictures of me, uh, you know, less than one years old sleeping in their camper. They had a truck camper, they've had travel trailers, fifth wheels, motorhomes. So I've grown up in this industry and I absolutely love camping. I am passionate about the outdoors, about hiking and uh, off-roading. So I love the outdoors. And what's really cool about an RV, a camper, a travel trailer, whatever you want to call it, um, is it's a, it's an incredible tool that gets you outside and gets you camping more easily, right? My wife loves camping because of the campers that we own, right? Because we have a bathroom and a toilet, a comfortable bed, a roof over our head, uh, heat in the mountains when it's cold, AC when we're in places that it's warm. So it's really a, a camper and an RV as a tool to get you outside is so, so cool. Now, what's wrong with the industry? I don't like doing videos like this because it feels a little negative and I'm a positive person. I tell my wife I carry my sunshine inside of me so when it's raining it's always sunny inside. Um, I, I believe in being focusing on the positive and finding the good in life but I am like I said I'm passionate about this topic and this is something that I see that's a little frustrating at the RV industry just doesn't quite get. And it's not every single manufacturer, but it's the majority and it's the big ones and it's the dealers that sell the majority and the big ones. And it's that, are you ready? Number one, it's that they're transactional. The, the industry is so, so transactional. And what does that mean? That means it's, it's more about you going in and just buying it and getting the heck out of their facility, right? Come grab your camper, get out of here, right? There's, there's, there's very little education, teaching, serving pre-sell, during sell and post sell, right? Like, and it's because that's what it is. It's just a sell. It's not an experience. Like they, they it just becomes such a transactional thing. And you know, the world used to not be like this. And if you travel out of the country, you'll notice in a lot of places, it's still not like that. You know, my wife is from Peru. And if you wanna buy fresh tomatoes or fruit or meat, you go down to the corner from the house and you buy it from the lady that sells fruit or you go buy it from the guy that sells meat. You go to the market that's local, that's close by. And that lady, she knows your name, she knows who you are, because guess what? You're buying that fruit all the time from her. And you become friends. And guess what? If she starts selling rotten tomatoes, everybody in the neighborhood is mad. They don't go buy her tomatoes, but she doesn't do that because she knows that would be unacceptable because it's more like a relationship and a friendship and a family, right? There's like, and that's how, that's how the world used to be in general, but then big business and, and, you know, huge commercial industries have created lots of transactional things. It's good and it's bad. I'm not against this stuff. I, I am for business. I'm, I, <laughs> I'm for progress but also we need some sort of balance, right? Uh, another case in point, I actually uh, went into Walmart recently. I actually saw this at a Target too out in Florida that I went to. Uh, I just noticed that previously, if you've ever been into a super Walmart, they have like, I don't know, 20 to 30 check stands where people are serving you, right? Like checking out for you. And then they have some like automated machines where you can go self check yourself. And, but it's like the ratio is like 30 to couple, right? You have maybe like four or six self checkouts on each end. And then in the middle was all um, people serving you. And I went and I've been noticing they've been doing all these remodeling. And what they've done is they've made almost every everything self-check now like they've gotten rid of all the all the people that were helping you to serve you to get out to check you out uh, they've like put it down to like i think four or six at our local one and now there's like 30 or 40 self-check machines and i was just looking at it and and that might be a lot due to you know the economy and and gas prices because the cost of goods has gone through the roof right but what this does too is it makes everything into more of transactional you, you, you know, unfortunately you go into some of these stores and you don't talk to anybody. You just walk in, 
you grab what you need and you leave right and and now nobody even checks you out you don't even say hello have a nice day right you just go and, and check out yourself right and you know overall for commodities when we're talking food and consumables where you're eating and you know I, maybe it's not the worst thing in the world i don't think it's ideal i think we need to have more human interaction but you know here at roa i'm always telling you know there's like everybody's moving to this high tech world you know s automations you know self serve self checkouts and i say i you know high tech is good but i want to be high touch right we need to make sure we're still humans interacting interacting with other humans and now the rv industry you know you're not selling a commodity when you sell campers right you're not selling a consumable that you eat but yet uh, the rv industry works as if they are selling consumables that you just eat or or throw in the trash after a season or two of usage and that's actually leads to very poor poor quality on top of this transactional thing but i'm sitting here and i'm like well a camper is not a it's not a consumable and you don't even need it right it's not like water and food you don't need a camper but the whole industry it's just this transactional type of um, mentality where it's just in and out in and out um, and throw it away when you're done with it I, it's because the quality on it is so poor you might as well throw it away right and, and so like to me number one it's transactional and number two it's quality and i think a lot of this these things kind of intertwine together and that's kind of the huge problem that we have um and the quality also is the warranty is terrible too that's the third thing the whole entire war warranty system through out the manufacturing all of all of campers and rvs is really 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 bad and it's even worse is because the quality is so poor though so things are breaking all the time and their warranty is such a nightmare to go through that it's almost not worth going through you end up fixing everything yourself or you end up throwing the trailer in the trash it goes into a landfill because it's so poorly built but it's just this 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 mentality of just transactions and it is not good i i really really am against it and i i believe that we need to create more more human relationships in this in this industry i i believe that it, it shouldn't be about this buy get lost now there are good dealers out in the world there are very good dealers there are people that really believe in servicing and helping but it, it, in my experience it's not as many as the bad ones unfortunately unfortunately and and a lot of that is just because the mentality of the transactions right uh, and, and the volume and and it's really a money's a money game and and that that kind of starts from the top it starts with you know the manufacturers and then it kind of goes down to the dealers and 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 they're just pushing as many as they can as fast as they can as cheap as they can and just working on making more and more money and you know i, I and just li listen i don't believe that there's anything wrong with making money because we believe that you can do good and give back when you're when you're healthy right and in a recession and whatever climate uh, Place, you want to make sure that you're in a good situation so that you can keep you know people working and pe pe keep food on the table and everything but uh, there's there's there needs to be balance really at the end of the day and I'm not trying to get all political or ph philosophical here I just these are some of the things that I think need to be changed in the industry as a whole and um, that's really my rant I think that's kind of what we're trying to do here at ROA you know to us we always say quality products and quality experience, right? To us, it's it's uh, first, the most important thing is that we're giving the people that come and work with us a phenomenal experience. And we're not perfect, we make mistakes, but we try so hard and because we care. And it's not just pre-sale. It's not like, you know, a lot of people try really hard before they got you in the door. And then the second you buy it out the door, you're done. And I believe we try harder after the sale than we do before the sale. I, and I tell the guys, listen, it's more important the post-sale than it is pre-sale. Like that, that, that is the most important part of the entire relationship, right? Because we do Roma rallies, we do 
Romer Adventures, right? We're, we don't want to just like end it at the transaction. We want to have a relationship forever, you know? And I'm, I, I'm just finishing a book on Toyota and it's funny is one of their things is they want to sell cars to the families, the parents, the children, and the children's children, the descendants, right? That's what they say. But the only way you do that is by creating a, first of all, a very, very good product, a quality product, but you also have to create a phenomenal experience. One of my favorite phrases from one of the executives of Toyota is he says, you know, we build people first and then we build cars. And, and to me, that is so important because at the end of your life, nobody cares how much money you made. Nobody cares how many campers you sell or, or what you have in life. It's more about what you've done for people. And, and, that's, and that's why the human part, the, the high touch part, is so, so important to have. And, and we're trying to bring that back into our industry. And hopefully someday we'll be able to influence the whole world to change the way they do business because that's what ROA is all about. It's more about a movement, bringing back good old fashioned business, just like what I see in my wife's home country where you walk down the street and you have a relationship with the people that you're you know, making a deal with on something. And, and, and that is, it's a beautiful thing. And we hope that when you come out and you work with us, that you feel like it is one of the most exceptional experiences you ever have. I just got an email this morning from a guy and actually I'm gonna read it, kind of funny. Uh, it just came in and he, he just asked me a quick question and I, I responded back to him. He bought this camper from us, I think maybe two years ago. And his response, this is this morning, he says, he says, many thanks Shane, appreciate your kind note and willingness to assist. He's just asking for something after two years of buying a camera from us. And he says, the sales experience that I had, that I have had with you is unequivocally the best that I've ever experienced. Thank you once again. That is our reward more than anything else is we want to make sure people are leaving happy, not just the day of the pickup, but two years later. And, and, and if we can do that, we feel like we've succeeded here. And I hope someday the entire RV industry will also do that. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Talk to you later.